Hello everybody, it's Annie and I'm excited to do another planner related video for you guys today. I have to say, I think this video is going to be awesome whether you are a veteran planner, um, having planned for years, I've been a planner girl for six years I think it is, or if you're even part digital, maybe your um, family is digital and you have a giant wall calendar in a command center or on your refrigerator or even those of you who maybe don't use a planner very much at all, I still think many of us have and are familiar with and use a monthly calendar. So yours may not be in a planner like mine, yours might be hanging on the refrigerator. I highly encourage you to get it, maybe get a piece of paper and take notes. If you are a veteran planner girl, I think this video will be very helpful and kind of like a, are you using your monthly spread to the fullest? Also, um, are there things you maybe hadn't thought of before? Um, really getting use out of this and even coming back to basics a little bit. So let's dive in as I talk about what you can put in a monthly planner um, and maybe even some tips on how I put them in and different ways to mark things and some things to think about and make sure that you're on top of. Okay, so this is an Erin Condren and it has the months and then after the months, I have these weekly spreads. But there's tabs on the side, so I'll just be flipping through the monthly spreads as we go along. Okay, the very first thing to put in a monthly spread in your monthly planner is actually kind of obvious, and I think all of us, this is the one we're familiar with, and those are appointments. Those are the things that are timed, like a doctor's appointment that we have to do, things, um, that cannot be forgotten and we all have these. So it might be a doctor appointment. Oh, I have a little bug joining us today. Let's see if I can get that out, there we go. They might be a doctor appointment, a dentist appointment, a vet appointment. It might be sports activities, sports games, other extracurriculars. It might even be things like early dismissal. It might be um, a work specific meeting. Those are pretty easy. We know about them. We write them down. My tip is to conserve space and write as little as possible. Um, I have decent sized squares in this planner, but not all of the planners I've ever owned have had boxes this big. In fact, some of the time it feels like they're half of this size. So not only do I have to use smaller handwriting in those planners, but I've learned to just really conserve and almost in a shorthand way to mark things down. So obviously I note the time, I know who the appointment is for. In this case, it was my daughter's six month well exam at the doctor and that it was a doctor appointment. So if I just wrote the time and my daughter's name, I could possibly forget that this was a doctor's appointment. I might think it's a dentist appointment or something like that. And if I just write the time and doctor, I might not remember which of my five kids it's for and or if it's for multiple kids and obviously all of these pieces of information are necessary. I'll also throw in one little trick that I have. This appointment was actually at 1.40. I wrote it at least five minutes prior to the time it's supposed to start. And this just helps me mentally as I'm getting out the door and I'm leaving and packing up, especially with all my kids, that if I can just back up the time that I write down in my planner, then I'm giving myself a little bit of a buffer and I, I'm rarely late to appointments and things. And part of that is because I just always adjust the time by at least five minutes, sometimes 10, um, but usually about five minutes and that helps a lot. So easy things, write it down, be as brief as possible, use smaller handwriting if necessary. And then my other thing is, and um, a doctor's appointment is actually a good example. My pediatrician, they send home these questionnaires um, when the kids are smaller and it has a thing like this, um, these kind of checklists for me to evaluate milestones where my child might be at a particular age and it just is one of those pieces of paperwork that I have to take back. So you'll notice I didn't write it over here. Um, this is my fifth kid so I've actually just gotten into the habit of <laughs> taking them but if you wanted to write a note about you know bring forms or return forms or maybe it's your week to bring snacks 
to sports practice or maybe you need to bring your laptop to a meeting or something like that and you don't want to forget those things it's not always best to put it in this box because you could take up valuable space um, one good idea is to put it in the margin if you have a sidebar in your planner or a note section on the bottom put it down there um, another thing that I do a lot is I use sticky notes and you could write bring form and then when you put the sticky note on you could have it in a place where it's not blocking a bunch of other information or you could have it off to the side or in the margin and you would still have your information so that's specific to any of you who may have digital planners or um, who may only be using like a wall calendar. If you're a planner girl, then I find the best place to put that kind of information is actually in the week itself and just put it in wherever the appointment is. So that is the easy one. Let's get that one out of the way. <laughs> Appointments, very simple to put down. Um, another one that you see frequently used and is a little more common as well is, I'm sorry, I've got these little like gnats, like fruit flies or something, and they're just enjoying my planner spread right now. Um, our birthdays and anniversaries. So I only have a few right now. I don't think I have any birthdays in September or October, but I one of my daughters has a birthday here my other daughter has a birthday here. I have chosen right now to put them on these little sticky notes. You can write it directly on the planner. Um, you could put it on a sticky note. That way, if more things come up in that space, you have it written really big, you know, your daughter's birthday, you can write it smaller or still fit in other information um, since this is planning so far in advance. So I just write it down like that. Um, I have in the past, so that way, I use mostly black ink. So if I write down birthdays and anniversaries, I'll often put them with a different color ink or maybe highlight them with a different color, like a, just a regular highlighter, and do little things like that to help them stick out if I want. So I've done that a lot. Um, right now, I don't have my planner set up that way, but that's a good way to just kind of break up the page so that way um, everything else sticks out as appointments and important things like that and then you know things that are in purple are the birthdays and anniversaries and they stick out a little bit more so birthdays anniversaries and here's a tip as well let me flip back to my daughter's birthday let's pretend that this was actually like my mom who lives out of state her birthday's on a sunday I would also a lot of times, um, and I really should be doing this right now, is I will backtrack and I will write notes to myself. So maybe on Monday, I want to buy a birthday card and on Tuesday, I want to mail the birthday card. So I would actually write those as notes to myself as almost like appointments to give them importance to make sure that I got this card in the mail in plenty of time for it to arrive hopefully by Friday or maybe by Monday. So, you know, you can kind of backtrack depending on the day or um, honestly, we're in a more digital age and you can even send some really fun things over text and email that are very card-like and there's apps where you can make these beautiful things. So maybe the reminder is here or even the day before, maybe I wanna create um, you know, an e-card and then schedule it to be sent or have a follow-up note to send it that morning. So birthdays and anniversaries, plus maybe a to-do um, involved with it. Maybe you want to purchase a gift and package the gift and mail it or something like that. Okay, still in this vein of kind of like meetings and due dates is actual, or meetings and appointments is due dates. <laughs> and um, if you are a student, um, or even if your kids are in stu are students and you're helping them out with projects and um, with time management, um, or maybe at work you have a project or you have um, just a home project with a due date, or library due dates and movies and things like that. I don't have an example of any of those really on my planner right now because I'm just not in any of those um, you know, places in life, but I do remember when I was in college that I did not um, 
want to forget any of my due dates. So I would take the syllabus the day that I got it. I would write down the test date or the paper date or whatever it was um, in bright red ink on the day. And I would actually, um, if you really want to get fancy, I would go, you know, if the 10th was my test, I would backtrack several days um, depending on the course and how much studying it required and what kind of test it was. I would go back an appropriate amount of time and I would say begin studying for, you know, this final or start writing this paper, um, finish rough draft, edit, and all of those kinds of things. And I would actually backtrack on this kind of calendar because when you're a student like that, or maybe you're at work and you're really focused on a large project, it not only is helpful to break it down into steps, um, but I mean, that's kind of your life. There's not as much of a worry that you're taking up too much spaces in your box because you know this is gonna take up so much space in your day. So to me, that's where it's okay to fill the box up with things. If it's actually gonna take that much time and it's gonna take that much of your day, then um, it's okay to take that much of your box. So, you know, you have to just feel that and, and what feels good to you and what you like to see and how you like to lay things out. But that's always kind of been my policy. Um, another one is refills or renewals. So if you have like a prescription refill, maybe write a note the day before so that you, you remind yourself or maybe the day of, depending on what it is. Um, the one that I was able to think about and have an example of is I'm trying HelloFresh for the first time um, when we get back from our vacation next week. So I have HelloFresh meals coming here, but I don't want to automatically just order the next week. So I wrote a note to myself to make sure I take care of that. Um, and I have it for the 13th. Now I chose to put it off to the side because I didn't want to cover up my square, but this is just a nice little sticky note. I could actually put it here and then as I get closer, um, if I feel like it's covering up any pertinent information, I could move it back over. So again, totally your preference, but just make sure you're looking. And if you tend to put notes in a notes section or a sidebar, train yourself to look at those as often as you look at your day. So you're not missing something for a particular day. Um, and the other thing, I also, um, I get all of my cleaning products from Melaleuca. It's this all natural company. It's kind of like Amazon Prime where you, um, you pay a small yearly subscription and then um, you order a certain minimum every month. And I just wanna make sure to get my September order in. So I have that renewal. That's kind of like a renewal or a refill. So both of those things marked down. And also, this is not something that is necessarily firmly set in stone on the 13th or the 12th. It just kind of needs to be done by then, which is why having um, a sticky note is useful because then I can move it and I'm not wasting this space for when something actually time sensitive comes up on one of those days. So I could do this a day to before, maybe a few days after. This one I could probably do all this week or up through here. So having it um, movable means, to me, if it's movable on the sticky note, it's kind of flexible in time as well when I get it done. I hope that made sense. Um, close along with this are things like annual reminders, but this can be um, not just things like a subscription, but it could also be um, you know, you want to, let's see, you want to change your air filter or you need to renew your driver's license or things like that. So you don't want to forget about it a year from now. So you write it a year from now and you can put it on a sticky note because you don't know maybe what's going on the, the week that you know this needs to be done. So um, I don't often write things that far in advance permanently on the paper, I usually use the sticky note method. Okay, um, some other things that are really useful to have on a monthly view are big projects. So the example that I have is I really need to declutter my clothes personally 
and also really work on my girls' clothes because they um, got a new dresser. I actually got a new dresser, my husband and I. Um, so we need to rearrange some dressers and that's a really good time to go through clothes and declutter. Also, we're transitioning um, from summer to fall, so I want to just be mindful of that and kind of keep an eye and see what kind of clothes my girls have for the cooler months and what I might need to make a list of that we need. So at least um, basically the girls in my family, um, I need to declutter our clothes. And then sometime when we get back from vacation, I put it out a little bit, but again, I can move this and do this whenever I'm feeling motivated and have some time, or sometimes just when I have time, I may not be motivated. Um, but I have a giant closet in our homeschool room and it's got a lot of toys and it's got a lot of school stuff in it and I really, really need to purge that. So we have Christmas coming up, so that's a good time to purge all my toys, um, things my kids don't play with and, and things that might be broken and just really clean everything up. Um, and it's driving me insane. So big projects like that. Um, if you do like plant a garden every year or you know you work on your landscaping, those are big projects and a lot of times maybe we wanna do it with our spouse. And so if there is a blank Friday or Saturday, you know, when your husband is home and you wanna get that in, sometimes you have to schedule those things. I mean, we're just that busy that sometimes that's necessary. So big projects. And when it gets closer to this, I might even break it down. Like I might get started and realize I have several steps I need to do. So then I could write declutter the toys and then I could write, you know, sort the toys and then rearrange the toy shelf, you know, things like that. I might break it down and be able to fill pieces in on my on my calendar as well. Again, if it is taking up time in my day, I'm spending several hours in the afternoon to clean this closet. To me, it's okay um, as long as there's room to write those kinds of things in this monthly view because that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm spending my time on. So if I'm spending my time on that, I'm not gonna be spending my time on another appointment. Um, so it's not a conflict of space. Another one, um, reoccurring meetings. Um, things like date nights, co-op, um, Bible study. Those are the examples I have, so I'll show you. So our co-op, our homeschool co-op starts on the 14th. We have it reoccurring every Friday through November. So I have to put it on here because I have seriously been known to forget or to almost plan something during this time, like say a dentist appointment. So I really have to write these down even though it's the same every week. Um, the same thing with date night. My husband and I have a date night at home. I should totally do a video on that sometime because it's really fun and um, it's a little bit unique. It's totally not my original idea. I've just adapted it and seen it around. Um, but anyways, at home we have date night, but again, it affects my menu planning and it affects, um, you know, we don't want to invite friends over that night. Otherwise I have to forfeit date night. So I at least want to have it written down. So I remember that we're going to do it. So I have, um, actually I don't have date night written in here, which is why I forgot it the other day. Um, but here I used a sticker for date night. So those are reoccurring things. Um, Bible study. On this monthly spread, I used a sticker. Um, on this monthly spread, I used a label. So whatever works, um, you can just write things in the planner. You can use stickers. You can use decorative tape, which is called washi tape, to um, block off long things. So if, for me, if anything is um, at least two days or more, I'll often use washi tape so I don't have to write family vacation in giant letters over this because on family vacation, we might be doing something on Tuesday that I wanna actually write down. So I do those and um, it's just, it's really nice that there's so many different ways that you can actually mark things in here and you can make it cute or you can just you know, write it because you're in a hurry and that's what you wanna do. Okay, so reoccurring things like date night or co-op. Um, I don't necessarily recommend, like if you work a nine to five job, Monday through Friday, that you have to write work nine to five, work nine to five, you know, every single day within this section. That's maybe a little too much. Um, but if you're in a schedule like a nurse or a firefighter or a policeman I'm thinking of, often you're 
on a few days or on a day off a few days on you know or something like that um, then it might be really important to mark your work days or your reoccurring things um, if you have a meeting that's reoccurring if you have um, I'm trying to think if there's any other examples I can think of and I can't so we'll just move on I think you get the idea uh, one thing that I never really mark in my planner, just because in our household, my husband does all of the finances, but if you are in charge of the finances or you and your husband both like to keep an eye on things, then write down when bills are happening, just so you know. Um, it's actually really interesting because sometimes your bills are like the first Monday of the month, say, and sometimes your bills are on a date. And sometimes those two things are closer together than you would think. Um, and so, and some bills are quarterly and some bills are annually and some bills are monthly. So if you write it out, there have been times where I have seen, um, and for my husband and I, it's like bill, 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 bill. Well, that's a really expensive week <laughs> or month and it might be beneficial to know how much money is going out and then I can plan accordingly. You know, maybe that's not the month we take this family trip. Maybe that's not the month that I buy all of the back to school clothes. You know, maybe I try to stagger it or save ahead or put it off to the next month. Just things like that to be aware of. So maybe I should have some of this written down even though I'm not the one in charge of or paying the bills, just so that way I know a little bit better when our money is leaving. So, but if you're in charge of it, definitely, definitely write it down. Um, again, another one that I haven't put in my calendar right now, I'm six months postpartum. I actually had to have a massive um, or a major surgery for the birth of my daughter. We had some health concerns and things like that for me during that pregnancy. So I have not been exercising lately, but I'm hoping to get back into it someday soon. And um, several years ago, I ran two half marathons and I loved this spread because I would write down what my training schedule was. So it was often like two or three miles on a Monday, I think two or three on a Wednesday, more like four on a Thursday, and then Saturday was my long run. So this week I'd run three, this week I'd run four, then five, then six, and so on as I trained. And then on the in-between days, you can write down how you're resting or how you're strength training. So um, it was super easy to just really light in the corner. I would write like 3M. And that's how many miles I had to write. So I didn't even have to write a ton more information. This calendar was for me. Um, and if you're the one training, it's simple to write it really small. Even if maybe your kids don't understand what it means, you know and you're staying on schedule. Um, another one you can do real small and like check off a box in the corner is if you have a habit, like maybe you want to drink a certain amount of ounces every day. You don't even have to write down how many ounces. Maybe you can just put a little check mark every single day that you do that. And then at the end of the month, it's really great to look back and see how many days you accomplish that goal. And the note section is a really good place to write your key where you put the check mark and then you write equals water or something like that. Or you could be more in depth. Like I will put a check mark on every day that I drink X amount of ounces. So it's really able you're really able to get a lot in this spread, especially if you use a little bit of shorthand and use a key. I just recommend writing it down somewhere because I've been known to forget my keys before. <laughs> okay, two more that I thought of. One is if you need to follow up with people. Um, I would say this is not work related as much as sometimes you're just like, oh yeah, I need to call um, my friend back and let her know about this. Something that's a little bit more irregular, but you want to remember. So it's really nice to write follow up with Jenny on this. And then you have it in your planner and you don't forget and you don't go past that day without calling that person. Um, or it could be an email. So again, not necessarily work related, unless you use this as a work planner. I was thinking more of those irregular things that don't come up very much. Um, 
and that just kind of came up or maybe you need to follow up with the you know the internet company or something like that so following up with people and lastly this is something i absolutely must add to my planner very soon and that is if you have a youtube channel or maybe a blog or something like that and you have some sort of schedule, um, especially if you've filmed things or written posts and you have them scheduled out, um, write down which day they're uploading, write down what it is. So you can see your content and know what you already have and when you have to plan for. So when does it, like do I have something for this and this and I need to start making content for the 22nd? So I actually have um, started to get my content scheduled out in advance because I really want this to be a regular thing on my channel, and but I haven't written it down yet. So I actually really need to do that so I know where I'm at and I can plan my future videos. Well guys, I hope this was a helpful video. If you're an expert veteran planner to just remember why we have a monthly calendar and as a reminder to use it and really utilize it. Or if you just have no planner at all or a digital planner, this I highly recommend. It's great to hang on the wall, um, you know, one of those 12 month calendars. So that way your family can see what's coming up and you're not over scheduling yourselves. Um, and just, it helps a lot with mom, what are we doing today? Or what are, what's going on? Or when is, <laughs> when is vacation? You know how many times I've answered that? So if your family can see, then they know and you don't have to answer those questions. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please um, feel free to comment any questions or thoughts and I will see you guys next time. Bye.